Broadcasting live from the Wellness Wonderland, you're listening to the Wellness Wonderland Radio. I'm Katie, and each week I chat with the most inspirational people on the planet on how to stay inspired in all areas of life. As you listen, feel free to tweet at me, at Katie Dalebout, or use the hashtag Wellness Wonderland. I'd love to hear your aha moments. So grab your headphones and listen on the go, or cuddle up with a notebook as we dive in deep with authentic conversations right here in Wonderland. Hey guys, this is your host, Katie Dilbo of the Wellness Wonderland Radio. Thank you so much for listening. Once again, I'm going to get in to today's interview very, very quickly, but before we do, I just have a couple announcements. First of all, my new website launched, katiedilbo.com. What do you guys think? Take some time, if you haven't already, to check it out on your computer. It obviously works on your phone, but it's so much more fun to see on the computer. So check out the show notes for this episode while you're at it. And everything from the podcast to my book to the fragrance I do with Good Medicine, all the things I do are housed under this new website. And it's a bit more organized for you with the blog, with the podcast, with the archives. So get lost in the new website for a couple hours. Procrastinate a little or do it after you get your stuff done. But just wanted to share that. And if you want to support the podcast, a really great way to do so is to leave a review on iTunes or better yet, subscribe on iTunes. Just click the purple subscribe button on Stitcher or iTunes or however you listen to your podcast. That would be fantastic. And another really great way is to share it with a friend. That would be super cool too. So I'm going to keep making these announcements for a couple months, but as you know, my book is coming out April 5th. So I'm super psyched about that. I'm actually going to be in New York the week the book comes out. And on April 5th, the day it comes out, it's a Tuesday, I'm hosting an event with Christy Harrison, who you guys know is my podcast bestie. She's been on my show twice. I've been on her show twice. And on April 5th in New York City, we're hosting a live podcast episode together with a bunch of special guests who will be on our panel. So if you are in New York City or you want to come to New York City, that is the week to do so because I will be there. So that's Tuesday night. And then the next night, Wednesday night, my friends Jordan Bach, who you guys know from the podcast, also a two-time guest, he, him and Gabby Bernstein, who is also a two-time guest, who is my mentor and she wrote the foreword to, to my book, they're hosting a book launch party for me on April 6th, that Wednesday, at Ginger Snap Organic from 7 to 9. So I would love to see you guys there. And if you're in New York City, please come. There'll be info about that later on. I was just super stoked about those events happening and had to share with you guys immediately so you can mark your calendars. And the other thing that's on my website is my book launch page and my book trailer. So if you haven't watched the book trailer, go check it out. It's really cool. I shot it in Toronto this summer when I was there, and it was such a blast to shoot with my friend Allie, who also listens to the podcast. She shot the video trailer for me. Some of my friends are in the video trailer. It's really, really fun, and I enjoyed the process of doing it, so check that out. And also on the book launch page, you'll hear about the bonuses that you'll get if you pre-order the book. So if you pre-order the book before April 5th, There's all these different prizes you can get. Some of them include expert interviews. So there's an interview with Aaron Stutlin about journaling. There's an interview with Jordan Bach, a video actually with Jordan Bach and I. There's a interview with Nancy Levin. You can get free stuff from Good Medicine. There's so many other prizes. There's PDFs that I made, different things that go along with the book, things that content that isn't in the book. I'm calling it my deleted tracks. So they're the exercises, tools from the book that actually didn't get to go into the book, not because they weren't great, but because I thought of them after (laughs) the book was already printed. So check that out. If you pre-order the book, you get to get those bonuses. It's all on the book launch page, which is on my new website. So when you're over there checking it out, check out the book page for sure. But stick around at the end of this interview with Alex Jameson because there's a second interview in this episode. Very cool. Very exciting. Because Earth Roots, which is an amazing tea company that my friend Stephanie has, is sponsoring today's show. So thank you, Earth Roots. And you're going to hear all about her teas at the end of the show in this mini interview because I really love what she's doing. I think she's fantastic. And... I really want you guys to check out her teas because I really like them and drink them every day. 
So stick around after my interview with Stephanie because I will be back to tell you who's coming up on the show next week. Welcome back, everyone, to the Wellness Wonderland Radio. I'm so psyched that Alexandra Jameson, who is a best-selling author, functional nutrition, life coach, positive psychology practitioner, chef, podcast host, star of many films, and she's appeared on Oprah, The Today Show, Dr. Oz, Martha Stewart Living, CNN, Fox News, people everywhere. She's just so cool. She was the co-creator and co-star of the Oscar-nominated documentary film Supersize Me, which I watched in health class in high school. And I loved her in and have followed her basically ever since. And my story has mirrored hers in a lot of ways. And now I'm obsessed with her Crave cast, which is number one on iTunes. And I was so excited when you came out with the podcast, Alex, because I truly love it, and it's so amazing, and recently, somewhat recently, her book, Women, Food, and Desire, has launched and is so amazing, and I can't wait to chat about that and so many more things today on the show, so thank you so much for being here, Alex. Oh, thank you so much. It's great to be here. Yay, cool. So I told everybody a little bit about your background in the intro and how I was actually introduced to your work in health class in high school. And um, it's just so funny to see that I became obsessed with you and with veganism from basically that moment forward. And my story with food, as the listeners have heard countless times, has grown and changed and evolved. And I followed that yours has has done the same. And um, and we've been, you know, crossing paths online with that in, in lots of ways. So I'm so honored that you're here today. But I would love it if you could kind of tell the listeners a bit about where you're at today and how things are constantly growing and changing for you and how you're just really gentle with yourself around that. Mm, thank you. That's a great topic to start with. I I was a vegan for over a decade. I changed my diet from basically the standard American diet because I got very sick in my mid-20s. And in my research, because I didn't want to take the Prozac and painkillers that my doctor prescribed for the symptoms that were coming up, in my research to find an answer, I discovered veganism. And along with a lot of old hippie medicine, you know, I was raised by authentic hippies out in Portland, Oregon in the 70s on an old organic farm. So along with that upbringing, when I discovered this new plant-based way of eating, it just resonated with me. And I said, you know what, that that feels like the way to go. It feels good. And I did it and it wasn't perfect, but I went totally whole foods, vegan, no sugar, no caffeine, no gluten for a while. And that really turned my health around super fast. And it, it was a great diet for me for a long time, for over a decade, I was vegan. And I had a a vegan, I would say a 99% vegan pregnancy. I had a a little boy about eight and a half years ago. And then in my mid thirties, my body started to change and things got bad again. Um, It was a whole different set of health problems. My hormones were changing. I was exhausted. Uh, My menstrual cycle was whacked out, and I had never had any problems with my menstrual cycle before. Um, I I was just totally depleted, and I was craving meat. Now, this was a problem because I had, in those 10 years plus of veganism, I had co-created and co-starred in Supersize Me where I was, you know, I played myself, which was Morgan's vegan chef girlfriend. I, you know, I I had written three vegan cookbooks and now my body wanted meat. It was really challenging and I, I really struggled for over a year, I, I tried to fix my body within the vegan framework. I 
I ate all the extra superfoods and I added all the plant-based proteins and I, I did everything you're supposed to do and nothing was working. And all this while I was still craving animal protein. And I was like in this war with my body, you know, I was now developing this weird messed up relationship with food that I'd never had before. And I realized, you know, I'm trying everything and it's not working and my body is telling me it wants something. Maybe I should listen to my body just the way I've been teaching people to listen to their bodies. So I secretly started eating animal protein again. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure Katie, you know what I'm talking about, like all this judgment and fear and like in the darkness of my kitchen with the windows drawn, I finally had some eggs and then some salmon and my mind was in turmoil. My emotions were upset, but my body felt so much better. My body responded so well. It just wanted more. It said, yes, veggies, yes, fruits, but oh my gosh, more meat, please. So I, I, you know, after several months of this, my hormones went back to normal. I felt good again. My menstrual cycle went back to its regularly allotted schedule. Um, but I realized that I didn't feel in alignment anymore because I had been known as this vegan expert and I wasn't talking about vegan anymore. I was just saying, here's a, gr a great plant-based recipe and talking about, you know, detoxing your home and all these other things, but I just wasn't, it didn't feel right. And my business was floundering as a health coach. And I realized I was like, I am not in alignment. I am not being fully honest about what's happening. And I finally came out as no longer vegan and when I shared my story online with my list, the backlash was, it was huge. You know, I lost a lot of actual friends, not just Facebook friends, but actual friends. I lost half of my email subscribers that week. Um, but at the same time, I had some friends who also have a big reach out there in the world who kind of came to my defense online, on Facebook, on Twitter, where things were getting, oh, so gross and, and bad. And they said, look, you know, here's someone who's being honest about what she needs. And she's trying to create a conversation about non-judgmental eating and doing what's right for your body. And we think that everybody should listen to and support her. So while I lost uh, my old way of being and my old frame, I gained a whole new community. And it was quite a shakeup. And I decided that, you know, food is such a, a personal issue and it's such an evolution for each person. You know, what worked for me at 25 didn't work for me at 35. And I anticipate at 45, 55, things might change. Who knows? I might go back to being 100% plant-based at any time. But you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to define myself by how I eat ever again. Because once you get stuck in a framework, it doesn't allow you to evolve and take care of yourself properly. So that's where I am now. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing that. It, I love that story. Every time I hear it, I think it's so inspiring. And I think, you know, outside of food completely, that story can inspire people a lot just around the fact of we tend to put ourselves in camps, like labeling ourselves and labels are just for containers, you know, not, not people. And I think it's easy to get wrapped up in that, these masks that we wear. And like you said, you know, food is so personal, but with, with anything, you know, it's easy to be like, I'm in this wellness world. I don't want to talk about things outside of that, or I'm really wrapped up in, you know, this certain career that I'm in. And I feel like I, I can't expand out of that. And so you really had to go out of your comfort zone. And then what's so beautiful about your story is that from being your authentic self, everything really blossomed. And I that's what I really, really love about the story. And I would love if you could talk about that a little bit. Like, I'm sure you had a lot of fear and, um, you know, that was probably just a really intense time for you to go through but you probably also felt immediate relief just by being your authentic self. So 
Could you share a little bit about advice for people going through maybe a similar life transition, whether it's with food or not, and how to just move through that fear and express authentically regardless? Mm, absolutely. And, and it's a great topic because I, I jokingly say that I became the vegan confessional booth once I came out, because a lot of a lot of women, especially a, a couple of men, but a lot of women wrote to me and said, "I'm going through the same thing. My health is failing. Um, the this diet isn't serving me anymore, but I don't have any um, fr- I don't have any friends outside of this community. All my friends are animal rights activists, or my husband." or my partner is really committed to the cause, but I feel sick and they don't have the support around them. And and that's what it really takes. You know, in my, in the last year, I uh, became certified in positive psychology and other people matter. You know, what makes a, a healthy, strong life for the individual is strong relationships. And by that, I mean people who are there to hear your struggles as well as hear your wins and your evolution. So I was very, very lucky in that I had always had a really wide, diverse group of friends. Um, My family is awesome. My family has always been supportive of whatever it is that I'm into or need. You know, they never question my veganism. And they never question my transition away from it. They're just curious and want to know how to support me. And I am endlessly grateful for what awesome parents and family I have. That they they don't make fun. They don't tease. They are curious about what it is I'm eating now. And they are like, oh, well, send me a recipe so I can cook something for when you come. And it's been, you know, they've been an incredible source of strength. And it really does take having people around you to support a big change. And if you don't feel like you have those people, I really recommend that you go find or create a new relationship with someone who seems to emulate or live the life that you are dreaming of. And if that is a you know, if that's a healthy non-vegan person who's non-judgmental about food, if that's what you want to evolve into, you know, who do you know in yoga class or who do you know in work who is a healthy person, has a positive outlook and isn't immediately, you know, in your sphere that you can spend more time with? You know, I, I think that's a great way to go about making any life change is to think about people in your world. And it can be a parent's friend or one of your best friend's parents or their aunt or uncle or a friend of your aunt or uncle, you know, somebody on the periphery who you know, where you're like, you know, I always really respected or admired them for this thing, whether it's their attitudes towards health or work or their attitude towards money. You know, if you have money goals in your life and you know someone who has strong um, values and they have good skill sets and a good mindset around something, take them to lunch. Ask them if you can meet them for coffee and just ask them about it and see if you can't uh, find a mentor to help you through this transition. Yeah, finding mentors, I think, is the most crucial thing you can do. And luckily, the internet is like the most fantastic tool in that and can can really help with that. And, you know, there's that saying, like, you're the five, you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with or something like that. And I think, you know, even if you, I like think, like you said, to find those people in your physical space that you can like touch and snuggle and take to lunch and get coffee with is ideal. But even if you can't right away, you know, look to Alex and listening to her podcast and, um, you know, just finding people online to kind of see what they're doing and it's clearly working for them and kind of do what they do. But also, you know, being flexible, like eating is really personal and we're all really different. And, um, and so is life, you know, so is like a routine that might work in one person's life might not work in yours. So really, you know, make everything customizable. And I think that's just like tremendous advice. Mm, nice. So 
something else that I wanted to talk to you about. So you said that you kind of became like the, you know, non-vegan confessional. Um, and I think that that's fascinating because I've had kind of a similar experience when I came out about my eating disorder, much in a similar way that, that you had people coming to you in that way. Um, mine was of the orthorexic variety, you know, and, and I think in this beautiful health craze that we're in with so many people getting into this world and into wellness and um, really embracing it and it growing, I think one of the dangers is that, you know, people can kind of get too into it. And for me, I know that I was ignoring many of the signs of my body, like, you know, my, not just my super low weight, but losing my period and all of these other health concerns where I was just like, clinging so tightly to my green juice and my other things when clearly like it wasn't working for me in the way that I wanted and then just like you I had so many people coming to me being like I experienced that exact same thing but I'm too afraid to to give this up so do you find you know it with what you the work that you do and people you know with the rise of this beautiful movement that we're both you know a part of do you find that there can be kind of dangers of people being too hard on themselves? And what kind of advice do you have for people with that to kind of let up a little bit on that and embrace more pleasure in their lives as well as wellness? <laughs> That's great. Oh my gosh. Are we too hard on ourselves? Yes. So hard. But, but in every area of our life, it's yeah. not just, it's not just food and weight. It's relationships, it's life purpose, it's finances, you know, how you do one thing is how you do everything for sure. Um, I, I, I tend, to, I have had a history in the past of diving into a school of thought and believing that that was, you know, gospel. Yes. And I, and I think that's a very human it's a very human thing for us to want to find answers and to yeah. find a, a way of doing things, a guru, a teacher. And I love, you know, luckily one of my strengths is love of learning and, you know, give me a library card and I'm happy for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think you have to make it your own. I think there are a lot of ways to there are a lot of paths to health. There are a lot of paths to happiness and, you know, one person's raw food, vegan, off the grid lifestyle is another person's hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and why can't there be room for all of us? I, I think there's, and why, you know, in the, in the mix of all of that, we do have to have compassion for others as we have compassion for ourselves. So if you find yourself saying, oh, those people just check yourself and remember that somebody probably looks at your life and thinks you're a bit cuckoo too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so take it easy. Know that, you know, you're going to evolve and you're going to change. The universe is an ever shifting place to live. So don't get too comfortable where you are because things are going to change. Yeah. It, it's crazy to me. I feel like I'm evolving so fast. I mean, maybe that's just like part of being in your early 20s but I think that like the person I was a year ago even six months ago is like vastly different than who I am today and it, I think that's only going to get more so and more so so I think it's just really about you know being flexible and and able to change and not like we were saying you know at the beginning like not wrapping yourself up in one way of being because then that becomes your identity and and we're just fluid beings so we are and I think you know I think that the this our current culture you know you and I live in North America there is a bit of a softening when it comes to the early 20s that I think is really exciting um and in, in that we're not as expected to pick a career path right the millennials gen x like we have many different careers in our life which I think is great, you know, and a lot of people want security and they want to stay in one train and that's fine. You know, if you find your passion early in life, that's fantastic and be open to really trusting your gut and your soul 
that if you are unhappy and if you see opportunity and you want to try something new, like trust it, go for it, leap, you know, get some, get some friends around you to support you in your transition. Um, you know, not everybody is as lucky as my dad. You know, my dad found his calling at a very early age. He was an educator his whole life. He was a high school teacher and then a principal, and he was at the same school for like 30 years. And it's so admirable, but he was also very clear that everyone's different and you have to do what you love, whether or not that's the same thing over your lifespan. And I think that's as, as true for food as it is for a career. You have to be more soulful and nourish yourself and give yourself the life that you want, not just the food that feels good to you. Mm, yes. And I think when you have the life that you want, it, the, it you'll realize it, it's not about the food, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a part of it, but it's not everything. And I think, um, you know, when your life is in kind of this like malleable place, figuring things out, it's really easy to turn to food or in my case, controlling your food and then to food again, you know? Right. And, um, and, and yeah, I think that it's, it's about making your life as a whole really awesome and cool and beautiful, not just your body or diet. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, you know, I, I put on these 14 day free challenges that are all about really just making your life fun and full and, and creating, um, you know, daily rituals that really fill you up and it has nothing to do with food and yet everything to do with food. Like the women in this challenge have, you know, I'm not giving them things to eat. I'm not telling them what to eat, but I'm telling them here, here's a meditation or here is, um, like go take a 12 hour pleasure play date for yourself. Spend an entire day this week doing exactly what you want. Get a babysitter, call the grandma, like schedule the time off for you. What do you want to do? Just having that freedom and that ease was so powerful for some of the women. They were like, I didn't realize how long it's been since I've taken a day for myself and 12 whole hours, not just an afternoon. Mm. And that, you know, you asked about play and pleasure earlier. I think, you know, getting into a state of, of fun, relaxed, playful energy in your body is one of the most healing things you can do for any illness or dis-ease or discomfort or frustration that you're having in your life. We need adults to go to the playground and get on the swing set and have fun in their bodies. We need adults to get your own hula hoop, go fly a kite, like go to the beach and build sandcastles, get a coloring book, do fun things, get a Frisbee. Remember what it's like to feel free and joyful in your body. We're used to beating ourselves up, working hard to achieve, um, or, or in order to get the body we want, we think we have to deprive ourselves, Mm -hmm. but really the best metabolic state you can get into for happy, balanced hormones, for great metabolism and digestion that really works is fun and relaxation. You know, you can either digest and metabolize, or you can be stressed, but you can't do both at the same time. Mm. So well said. That's amazing. Something else that we haven't really touched on, um, but I know is a a huge part of your work and your book, is demystifying the shame and the guilt around our bodies and around sex, especially for women. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that is so important? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, as I was exploring a new diet, I was also coming through a divorce And I think that was part of what necessitated a move towards animal products was just the emotional stress of going through a divorce and being a single mom all of a sudden and having to move and really, really a rough time. And so many can relate to that. Um, And at the same time, I, you know, I finally began to realize as I came out of the fog of that stress was, oh my God, where's my libido? Like, I haven't been interested in sex. Um, The way my marriage ended, I got very disconnected from my libido and my body. And I used to really like sex. Like 
I used to have fun with it. This was a good thing. And it took some, you know, some practice to, to find my orgasm again, to discover that my body could feel good and that there was real benefit to masturbating on a regular basis. I finally started dating again and have and flirting and, and having fun in my body in a more sexual way was actually very empowering for me. And women have a, we have a really rough road when it comes to healthy sexuality. You know, most of us were not taught that masturbation is okay. In fact, we were told that sex was dangerous. We're told that by our parents, by our religion, and by culture at large. You know, every movie, every TV show is about rape. Um, and yes, it happens, but we're taught that our bodies are inherently dangerous and that we still have this idea that we have this one gift to give. And when we lose our virginity, as if it's this thing that we can misplace, um, we're somehow tarnished. And that idea, that framework is still very strong in this country. We still have a very, and puritanical isn't even the right word. We just have this very oppressive vibe when it comes to women's sexuality. And as I started eating in a new way, in a way that felt good for my body, I realized, you know what, I'm going to have sex the way I want to have sex that feels good to me. And sometimes that meant, you know, dating multiple people at the same time and exploring things that I wanted to explore with my own body that were good for me and taking the shame off of it. So for women, sex and food are very closely related. And when sex is dangerous, as it is in our culture, food becomes our safe sex. You know, our bodies crave pleasure and fun. And if we don't get it through fun movement and intimacy and free sexuality, then we're going to find it at the bottom of a Ben and Jerry's carton. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> so this is like wonderful. And I'm so glad that this is an element of your work that's so strong because like you said, it's just not talked about nearly enough. And I was wondering if you could give some advice to, to yourself when you were going through that period when you realized like, hey, I can't find my libido, it's MIA, and I really want that. And, you know, wanting to trade that for that sort of pleasure for all the pleasure you were seeking through your food, mm -hmm. um, where would you tell someone to start? So luckily, it can be as simple as a meditation practice. If you commit to giving yourself little self-pleasure dates throughout the week, let's say three sessions of 20 minutes a piece where it's either, you know, by yourself in your room with a new toy or just an erotica book that you want to try, um, that can have a huge impact on your libido. Women are really turned on just by erotic fiction and we can, uh, our testosterone goes up when we start fantasizing and testosterone is, you know, the hormone to get our libidos revved up. It's also really important to make sure you're not consuming the foods that dampen libido. Sugar is the biggest one. So that includes alcohol. Um, and you know, that turns on cortisol, which lowers testosterone. So it has all these spiraling effects. So if your libido has been in trouble for a long time, really look at your sugar intake and look at, you know, how much self-pleasure, how much masturbation are you giving yourself and really try to include that a few times a week, just 20 minute sessions a piece is enough. Or if you want to go longer, whatever works for you, um, that can really be the best way um, but also look at, at whether you're on hormonal birth control. You know, a lot of women have been on hormonal birth control, the pill or the, you know, they've had, you know, something put in their arm, uh, you know, hormone packets inserted into their body that can really dampen your libido. And our bodies are designed to have an ebb and flow and, you know, with 
normal, healthy hormone balancing, you should have a surge in libido right before uh, your period starts. But if you've been on hormonal birth control for a long time, you may never have experienced that. So a lot of women, when they decide to go off the pill or other hormonal birth control, um, it can take some time, but with other practices like, you know, a lower sugar diet and, you know, the right kind of exercise, like not working out too long, but doing some weight training that can actually boost your testosterone as well. You can get that balance back. Mm, Amazing. Thank you for sharing all that because again, it's just, there's not many people talking about this and it's so important that that's not cool. (laughs) Mm, Yeah. It's because it's such a, it's such a wonderful tool, you know, it's, and by that, I mean that, uh, our sexuality, I I just think that food and sex are two of the best things about being a human being and, you know, they're fun and they feel good. And unfortunately they are the two things that we have the most morality around and the most tied up in knots emotions around and the most shame about. So I really am a stand for women finding pleasure in their bodies with food and with sex, because when you have a a healthy, strong, happy relationship with both, you have ease, you have strength, you have agency, you feel empowered, and you're much less likely to put up with other people's crap. (laughs) Mm, Yeah, well said. Yeah, it, we have so few sensationary pleasures, and to deny any of those in any way just is pretty silly. <laughs> well, it it makes sense. Um, you know, there's a long history of suppression and a long history of shame with both. So it does take some introspection, and it you know you need to look at how were you raised in your family, what were your whoever raised you, what were their beliefs about food and about sex? What did they tell you either overtly or subconsciously about your body and about food? And, you know, without blame, really, if you could possibly look at these things without blame and get clear about that, then you can start to really uncover what your beliefs are and start acting on that. Yeah. Yeah. So amazing. I'm so glad we're having this conversation. I really think it's going (laughs) to help a lot of people. I know it's really helped me. Um, So, okay, so now I want to get personal with you and ask you this signature question that I ask everyone who comes on the show. So it really gives us like a window into you and your your life. So can you walk us through your morning routine and some of the specifics you do to start your day and why that's important in how Mm -hmm. the rest of your day goes? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I get up and I automatically drink a glass of water because I'm super dehydrated. (laughs) I always yeah. have a glass of water by my bed. Our friend Sean Stevenson calls that give your insides a bath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know. Like I can't even make it to the kitchen. I need the glass of water by my bed. So I take water with me to bed. It's right there when I wake up. And then I get up and I in the summer, it's been so wonderful. I take my yoga mat upstairs on the roof. We have the roof deck in our building here in Brooklyn, New York, where I live. And I meditate and I do my yoga up on the roof. I water the plants um, and I come back down. And uh, if my son is with us at that time, then we'll, I'll get breakfast started for him and I'll make a green smoothie for me and we'll hang out in the morning. You know, I really like morning family time. And during the school year, we still like we get up and we have a real breakfast. We sit down, we share breakfast together, we talk. Mornings are super magical and important to me to have quiet, relaxed time. We don't eat in a rush. Like I would rather get up a half an hour early for a 6 a.m. flight. I would rather get up early so I can eat breakfast and not rush out the door. Like I just don't feel good if I rush a meal or skip breakfast. So I will get up early to have time to do that. You know, turn on NPR and listen and talk. That's just, that's just my morning. And I try not to look at my phone too early. I try not to look at email until like 8 a.m. or 9 (laughs) o'clock. So movement and family and good food. That's my morning. 
I love the mornings too. I think they're a magic hour and I like to wake up early just so that I can have more of the it. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. my favorite. So what about at the other end of the day, in the evening? What, what are some of your evening routines and rituals, maybe the last three things you do before you wind down and relax at the end of the day? Mm. So when my son is with us, I, you know, read to him in bed, snuggle with him. And then, um, you know, my fiance, Bob, and I, like, we we love good TV, So we'll have some berries or some fruit or make some herbal tea and watch one of our shows. And, you know, that's how we, that's how we end our day. And then we usually end up going to bed about the same time. And we both read in bed before nodding off. I almost always fall asleep first. Um, We don't have any screens in the bedroom, no phones. We allow our Kindles, but no internet access or TVs or anything in the bedroom. So yeah, that's it. I love that. What are some of your favorite shows? Ooh, oh my gosh. I love good TV. I love Game of Thrones. I love Orange is the New Black. The Brink is great. The Nick. Um, Amy Schumer. She's so great. Oh, she's so good. I can't wait for the new Stephen Colbert Late Show to air. I can't wait to watch that. So I love comedy and um, I loved House of Cards and Game of Thrones. So much good stuff out there. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And I love that you shared that because that it's funny that you that you brought that that up. Um, I actually had a session with my coach, who I'm pretty sure you know, Cora. And oh, I just saw Cora the other night. It's so funny, small world. But um, anyways, and I was like having this, it's funny we were talking about shame, but like that's basically how I end my day. Like I'll, um, you know, usually make dinner and then I'll like watch a couple of shows or YouTube videos. Like I love watching vlogs and just YouTube videos. And then I'll, you know, get ready for bed listen to something, maybe listen to an audiobook or something and um, and then get into bed. And I just had like all this shame around the fact that like, I was like, I should be journaling or taking a warm bath or like doing, you know, oil pulling again, or I don't know, like dry brushing again or doing something like productive even. And, I, and then, you know, she really just like, was like, you're so in your head about this. Like I had so much shame around this like one thing that's like such a Again, like entertainment's another pleasure that we all should just embrace and forget the shame on. So I, I love that you you brought that up. As well. Yeah, that's you know that's the thing in, in a lot of my healthy hippie community. People are like, oh, I don't even have a TV. I'm like, you know what? I love TV. TV is great. Yeah, it's the best. It's the best. It is. It's and fun. I think now in this day and age too, it's not like I'm just like turning on the TV to like kill time. Like I don't have a TV TV, but like now with like Netflix and being able to watch shows when you choose, it's really like a mindful thing. That's like, I'm choosing to watch this as an experience that I'm Mm -hmm. having with other people. And absolutely a more well-rounded person and member of society. I think. Heck yeah. See, we got to have fun. It's not just, you got to like go to the playground and watch a crappy movie or something. Yes, exactly. (laughs) So much. And I, I learn a lot about myself, I think, too, when I'm, um, you know, watching other characters and, and seeing this art form, you know, I think it's I think it's definitely beneficial to my life. Well, I think it actually speaks to a very human need for story. Yeah. You know, we I, I think that's why people love TV so much is we used to sit around the fire and yeah. share story and tales and myths and it's a it's a need in us to feel connected and to feel like we're a part of something. And we don't have the communal fire anymore. Yeah. So we gather around the TV instead. Yeah, it's like our new fire. <laughs> <laughs> that ha- it, but the blue light messes with your circadian rhythm more than the fire probably did. But... It does. That's why we got a projector. So we oh. project onto the wall. It's so fabulous. That's so cool. <laughs> From Sean Stevenson, I got these, um, these, I've talked about it in the sleep podcast I did with him, but these orange beta blocking glasses that, you know, make me look real cool. You and Dave Asprey, the bulletproof exec, walking around (laughs) with your orange glasses on. Looking all, everyone looks so tan. 
<laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, well, that's amazing. I'm glad we addressed that. So where do you hear your intuition the most? And how do you remind yourself to follow it? Mm. So it's funny. I'm actually doing a podcast on this this week oh. myself. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, you know, I... I take people through an exercise called yes, no, which is basically to think of a question that you are a definite yes to and, and answer a question that you're a definite no to just to begin to hear your body's version of yes. And I'm, I'm pretty good with feeling it. Like I, I know that yes is sometimes a tingle in my inner thighs or it's a heat at the top of my forehead. No is more like this Ugh, the sinking feeling in my groin and my belly or like sweat in my armpits. So I, I've gotten pretty clear about the nuances of what yes and no mean. Um, and, and there's always room for learning more, for getting even clearer. And I, I think the important thing for me is I, you know, I deepen my connection with my own intuition, my own soul is that it's very challenging for me to hear it when I live in New York City. And I've been here for 16 years. And I love it here. And I also know that I am a, you know, I am a nature mystic. I love, I will hug a tree. I will, you know, going to the Oregon coast is my spiritual home. And I really need to be in nature to be able to ground and feel totally connected and hear those deeper wisdoms that come from our bodies. So for me, it, you know, I really got to get outside. I have to get outside and at least walk around outside, preferably go to a park, hopefully go to the beach every year, at least go to the Oregon coast so I can just reconnect with that special place. So intuition for me is very nature connected, but it always comes through my body in some way. Mm, very cool. So for everyone listening, they should basically download this that episode of your podcast, which I'll put in the show notes, and take it out for a walk in nature. And it would be like the perfect combo of mm -hmm. intuition. Excellent. That's like my favorite thing to do is listen to a podcast on a long hike. It's like the best. <laughs> I get to hike with you all the time, Alex, in my Oh, ears. that's so cool. I love it. It's amazing. So how do you, you – you do so many amazing projects and you are doing so many different things and you're a mom and you're an entrepreneur and an author and um, you're in a relationship. So how do you stay present for all of these different things and stay organized and still structure your days to prioritize self-care and pleasure and make that a priority in your life? Mm. You know, it, luckily I have an amazing partner. Um, I, you know, I, I found a man who he had a very strong meditation practice when we met and he inspired me to do that more often. Um, you know, I just, I have a very low tolerance for ill health. I have a very low tolerance for pain and dissatisfaction. And I, I just can't put up with uh, when things aren't going in the right direction. I just am like, you know what? I, I lost my mom and one of my best friends in the last couple of years. And it just reminded me that life is too darn short to suffer in silence. It's, you know, if something isn't working, change it. If you need help with something, ask for help. If something's broken, do your best to fix it. And always have compassion for yourself in the midst of turmoil and change. But for myself, I can't stay stuck in a place or in a way of being too long. And I'm still working on stuff. Believe me, I got my own limiting beliefs around things that I am making changes with. But I have people in my life. Like you said, you are the five people you hang out with most. So my partner is really dedicated to simple systems, which really helps me stay on track. Um, my kid is a great barometer of my own well-being. You know, if I am off, he is off and we all have to pitch in and take care of each other. This is a, this is a family affair. We're all part of the show going well. My best friends that I hang out with, you know, they are open to discussing those big life questions and, and really 
taking care of their own limiting beliefs and finding answers. So, you know, your community matters so much. So much. Oh, that was so good. You're so articulate, Alex. Mm, Thank you. I could talk all day. You're so great. All right. Well, (laughs) let's wrap with some fun quick fire questions. So just say the first thing that comes to your mind. Cool? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Favorite color? (gasps) Raspberry. Favorite yoga pose? (laughs) I love, oh shoot, what's that one called? I can't even think of what it's called. It's like you're flying. Dancer? no, you're like your your oh, back like, leg is up and your front arm is down. That explains it. That doesn't help at all, does it? Like I, half moon? Yeah, like that. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah that one's fun. <laughs> it's like kind of like a half cartwheel, I always say. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, that's what I always say when I'm teaching that one. Um, favorite week. Favorite day of the week. <laughs> favorite day of the week. Oh, I love Friday. Friday, it's so good. Favorite hour of the day. We kind of already talked about this. Oh, I love morning. I love six to seven. Yeah, so nice. So much promise to the day. Mm-hmm. Favorite veggie? <gasps> uh, this week, man, I'm really craving some like stuffed squash blossoms. Ooh. Yeah, weird, but yummy. Sounds really yummy. Today, where I am, it feels like fall, which <gasps> I was suddenly, Yay! Yeah, I was suddenly, suddenly feeling like, pumpkin me things and squash. I can't and wait. I, can't I know. Wait. It's such a comforting time of year, but I'm also kind of like, I love the summer and I don't want it to be over either. Um, favorite fruit? Oh, peaches right now. Peaches. Oh, I get like OD on peaches. Really? What's your favorite way to eat peaches? Just plain or do you like to put them in any particular way? Oh, I'm such a snob. I, I wait until they are like perfectly ripe and then I cut them into quarters and I peel them Mm -hmm. so that I'm taking off as little of the flesh as possible I don't like the peel I hate the fuzz so So I just I peel them and eat them yum yum that sounds really good right now now I'm craving peaches (laughs) um what are you where are you feeling most confident in your life what area of your life are you feeling most Mm -hmm. confident and secure about Hmm. you know This is not always the the case, but I feel like I'm really good with my family, like my kid, my partner. They just, they know that I love them and I know they love me and it's really juicy. Mm, That's beautiful. And that's really the most important part of life, I think. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, On the other side of that, where are you struggling and where do you feel most insecure and still growing Mm. um and I think it's there's a an aspect of financial worthiness that I still struggle with I you know I adopted some ideas from my family that you have to work really hard to make money I have that too Ah, and it served me well you know I I'm never I never go without but I'm like Maybe I don't need to work so hard. Yeah. <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I think like hearing other people's vulnerability and that we all still have struggles and hang ups is is really, really awesome. Mm. So where do you see holistic wellness and women's sexuality in say ten years? And and where would you like to see it? Oh man. How much longer do we have? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's kind of a big question for the quick fire. It is. It is. You know, what I really want is for younger girls to have more access to better information and to have sex ed in this country be so much better than it is. I want young girls and young boys. I mean, I'm raising a boy and I, I love him dearly. And I, I just think there's, it's so different for boys. Um, I want girls to know what their bodies are are, what they're capable of, what sex is and all of its complications and its glories. You know, I don't think kids should be having sex young, but they already are. Right. So we should be telling them all the facts. Right, right. So sex ed would be such a huge step in the right direction. Yeah, there's this, I'll I'll send it to you and I'll also put in the show notes, but um, I recently saw this like 
comedy bit making fun of like the current system and how many on John Oliver. Oh, I watched it. How amazing. I mean, it was just like fascinating. And yeah, I'm glad you saw it. But it's just crazy, like the indiscrepancies and like co- contradictions. And um, it's just crazy. And that's that's the only education that we get with it. And a lot of people aren't talking about it with their families and even with their friends. So we all feel really alone and um, and take to the internet to, to get our information. So Oh, think- yeah. That's a great place to get sex ed from. Yeah. The internet. What? <laughs> yeah. So I think it's really powerful that um, hopefully that will change and grow and expand in the future. Yeah. Um, okay. What's your favorite beauty ritual? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I love having somebody else put makeup on my face. Mm. <laughs> um, having my hair done, like just going and getting a blowout, which I don't think has happened in like three or four months. But for an event, I'll go, you know, get my hair done. I love that. Yeah. I mean, it's honestly, just like having people touch my hair is like mm-hmm. my favorite thing ever. I know. Like I know. I it's like a massage on your it's face. It's the best. It's better than a massage. Like, I love people playing with my hair. <laughs> if anyone wants to sign up to do that, feel free. Come on yeah. over. Come on massage over. Massage my head. Yeah. Um, okay, so now I have a little scenario for you. So it's like 8 p.m. You've had a long day. You're tired and you're super hungry for dinner. Um and, but you want something quick. So what do you eat slash make slash get to talk us through what would happen in that scenario? Okay. Well, hopefully I've been to the co-op recently. Um, my favorite quick meal is honestly a can of Amy's organic lentil soup. I love it so much. It's so easy. It is so yummy. And uh, I can just, I'll have like a bowl of lentil soup and I'm happy. I'm done. <laughs> So I'll put like, I'll doctor it up a little bit. I'll drizzle some olive oil on it. I'll add some herbs when it's heating up. But if I'm like, if I'm really in a pinch and I'm just starving, I'd rather just go for that super easy thing. You know, they have BPA free cans now. It's, it's no biggie. Ah, uh, yes. I'm so glad you said that because I think there's a collective sigh happening to all the people <laughs> listening who follow yeah. you. Oh, I just like, whip up a quiche now. Yeah, yeah. And people are like, oh, it's okay that I sometimes eat, you know, these healthier versions of quick food. And that's amazing. And so does Alexandra Jameson. You heard it here, folks. So that's, thank you so much I for I went to culinary that. school and I got a yes. cat full of soup. <laughs> That's amazing. That is so amazing. Um, so what is your, you mentioned a green smoothie. What is your go-to staple breakfast lately? Okay. So I am addicted to this one smoothie that I totally ripped off from my favorite smoothie place back home in Portland, Oregon. It is my fave. So I crack open a young coconut with Coco Jack. If you don't have a Coco Jack, you have to get one. Never destroy one of your chef knives again get a Cocoa Jack. It just like pops the top off of your young get, coconuts. I need to get one. They're awesome. I love it. And my kid can help me too. Like he can help me bang on it. It's great. Cool. So I use the young coconut water as the base and then I'll scoop out some of the flesh from the inside. And then I'll use spinach and a scoop of almond butter, some lime juice, Ooh, like a, a, a little, like just like a half a, half a lime, uh-huh. a little nubbly twiglet, of fresh ginger. Uh Uh-huh. Um, and then I've been adding lately, um, bulletproof collagen Uh and some vitamin C powder and some of his coconut oil, the MCT oil from bulletproof coffee. Um, yeah. And I think that's it. And it's so good. It's refreshing. It's light, but it's really filling with the fat and the protein. I can't, I cannot do green smoothies without protein in the morning. I'm like, I, I'm hungry in five seconds. Yeah. Yeah. I find that if I have just a piece of fruit or just, um, just greens and fruit, I, it almost makes me hungrier than if I hadn't had it before. (laughs) You know, I mean, it's disgusting. In the winter, I will have the hugest bowl of oatmeal with like raisins and walnuts. And it's like, I am a lumberjack at breakfast. I'm starving. 
Yeah, yeah, it's 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 fascinating. I was always like, I'm doing something wrong. I just ate, but now I realize like that's just how my body is, and um, yeah. I used to just ignore that, you know. So I think it's it's so it that wisdom is there for a reason to be mm-hmm. listened to. Um, what is the best meal that you've ever had or you've ever had recently? <laughs> oh, okay. So for for Bob's fiftieth birthday. Um, he took me to Eric Repair's restaurant here in New York City, um, the fish one. And now I'm totally blanking on what it's called. Oh, La Bernadine. It was amazing. What did oh you guys my have? gosh. I mean, I, I can't even remember. It was like eight courses. Whoa. It was like, um, uh, like, sh- you know, um, scallops and then fish and then you know like this tuna tartare thing and amazing vegetables it was just ugh, unbelievable so nice cool that's awesome what does your ideal day look like maybe going there for dinner <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's a little excessive for me <laughs> i actually was like i couldn't even eat the next day i was like oh i'm so full still yeah. uh, you know a quiet morning, like I described earlier, you know, get up early, have tea on the roof, meditation, yoga, take my kid to school. Like I love walking my son to school. It's, we moved close to a school so we could walk there every morning. Um, and then afterwards, after I drop him off, like I love to go right in one of my favorite cafes, you know, either go get some tea and sit and write for a while and then have lunch with a girlfriend. Um, and then if we're talking like super ideal day, you yeah, know, go, for go it. get a massage, go have yoga in the afternoon, get a blowout, um, get a blowout, have, have someone do honest. your makeup, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I have to be honest, I love, I love recording my own podcast. Like I really love what I do. I, I can feel it for you too, Katie. You just like, you love this. It's so fun so to connect fun. Yeah, and talk with people. Um, I really love coaching. I love talking to my clients and then I want to be done by like four. <laughs> I want to be done and then go get my kid, maybe go to the library together and then just make dinner. You know, this time of year is so beautiful. We can go sit up on our roof deck and take dinner up when it, the sun is setting and sit outside and then, you know, watch a movie or like the, the three of us have been totally addicted to the new Cosmo series with Neil deGrasse Tyson. So learning about science and blowing our minds, yes. that's always fun. Aw, that sounds amazing. I want to hang out with you on that day. <laughs> I want to be the girlfriend you go to lunch with. Yes, come over. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, what is your favorite on the go snack? Oh, hmm tough call there. Um, I always have like nuts, like Brazil nuts or almonds. Yeah. Those are so, so those are so easy. And yeah. I really, I really got into Brazil nuts in the last year. I'm like a, I'm like a squirrel. I'm like, nee, 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 nee. Num, 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 num. <laughs> exactly. I think they're like the tastiest nut too. I really do. I love them. I love the texture. They're great. Yeah. I recently made Brazil nut milk and it was mm. like the best nut milk, better than cashew. And Dude, really the cafe in my neighborhood uh, makes their own nut milks every oh. day. You get like cashew maple or almond cinnamon. They're oh my so, gosh, that sounds you know, so good. It's ridiculous I come expensive, hang out. but it's good. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. Um, all right, ideal or favorite movie? Oh, geez. Uh... Oh, I can't pick. There's so many good ones. Okay, you can totally. Toss out a couple if you want. Okay, my totally dorky girly favorites, like the ones that I bought on DVD because I had Those to have, my kind of have them. Okay, so girls just want to have fun um, with Sarah Jessica Parker. I haven't <laughs> seen that. I didn't know Sarah what? Jessica. What? No, I'm gonna like watch it tonight. <laughs> you have to please go watch that. I didn't t- know she was. I didn't know she was like in a movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well That's before Sex in the City. Well before, oh, well I'm before, so excited. That. Yeah. Cool. like late, mid eighties, early eighties. Um, and Valley Girl, another g- classic, classic with Nicolas Cage, finest performance besides Peggy Sue Got Married, I think. Um, and then I have the three like children's movies that I've seen hundreds of times, like Labyrinth, 
um, Dark Crystal and Never Ending Story favorites. Mm. Love those. Amazing. So good. Favorite book? Oh, geez. Okay, the favorite book that I'm reading right now, just to narrow that down, <laughs> is called um, Soul Craft by Bill Plotkin. And he is, he, I am going to go do a retreat with this guy really? soon. Cool. Yeah, he created the Animus Valley Institute where he take, he's, a, he's a psychotherapist and he takes people on these nature journeys as a, a soul journey. Whoa. Yeah. And it's just really powerful stuff. It's, it's really speaking to me in a way that nothing else has spiritually. Like I was saying, you know, nature is my spiritual practice, but I never had a vocabulary for it until I discovered a couple of books and his was one of them. Wow. I'll have to check that out. That sounds fascinating. Um, what is your favorite song? Oh, or your go-to like karaoke song. (laughs) Okay. So I can play one song on the ukulele. I'm learning to play the ukulele too. Are you? Yes. Nice. So it's a song from Monty Python from their movie, The Meaning of Life. It's the universe song. I highly recommend you look it up. You okay, can look I up will. or I'll have how to play it too. Do it. <laughs> we should start a band. Totally. <laughs> I want to make start writing ukulele songs that are all about random health problems like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Oh you know, my gosh. That- Yes, I, I'm like learning to play. Well, I'll just like out this right now. I'm making a parody song. I learned to play John Mayer's Your Body is a Wonderland, and I'm making like a parody version for the Wellness Wonderland. So maybe yes. by the time that this airs, I'll be able to play that on you a video of sorts. Dueling dorky ukulele girls. Yes, I com. love it. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. That's so amazing. So, all right. On that note, as you know, Alex, the name of this podcast and my home online is The Wellness Wonderland. So if I offered that to you to live in a wellness wonderland, what does that mean to you? Hmm. Wellness wonderland means that there's always good food options, that you've always got a farmer's market close by, that the weather is always good to go outside and play yes. that you get your, your solid eight hours of sleep that you have people to hug and fun things to do together. Mm, that's amazing. Covered all the bases. I love that so much and everything you shared. Thank you so much for coming on the show and hanging out with all of us. And you're just so amazing. So do you want to tell anybody anything else about where to find you for the Cravecast and any other exciting things? I'll put all the links below. But anything oh, great. else you want to share? Yeah, absolutely. So Women, Food, and Desire, my book, is coming out in paperback in September. Yay. So excited. And when you go to womenfoodanddesire.com and order the book there and just email me your receipt, it's super easy. Uh, you know, you can just click the links and like, oh, I'll go buy it on Amazon through Alex's link, whatever. Um, then I'm going to send you all these great bonuses. So you get all these cool interviews and discounts and fun things that will help you use the book as well as a 50 page um, cravings cure cookbook, which is fun. Um, and then you can check out my podcast if you're a podcast yes. junkie like me and Katie. It's you can go to it's amazing. The- bit.ly slash cravecast and it's in iTunes under the cravecast and subscribe on iTunes because it is my favorite I love it so much and she's interviewed so many cool people some of the same people that I've had on this show so it's amazing and you love it and thank you guys so much for listening and thank you Alex thanks Katie this was great Tell me about Earth Roots and who you are, Stephanie. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I, like I told you right before we started recording, I'm obsessed with your teas and you sent me some and I have just loved them ever since. So can you tell me a little bit about how you started your work doing what you do now and who you are and how it came to be? Yeah, sure. I, I've always loved teas. I started drinking them in high school for just for the taste and for fun and before I realized what great benefits they can have. Um, I started the company 
last year when I realized that I wasn't happy at my job and I didn't want to be there forever. And so I wanted to do something that I was passionate about and that I could, I could do without having a nine to five job, I guess. So, so yeah, I started just figuring out what kind of teas I wanted to make and went from there. And, but yeah. That's amazing. So how did the name Earth Roots come to be? Oh, geez. I think that's the hardest part of any business is coming up with a name. <laughs> I love um, it. Oh, good. I'm so glad. It's. I wanted to bring in the aspect that it's natural and I use a lot of roots, leaves, herbs, all that stuff. And so it just, I went through a few and this one kind of just stuck. Like, yeah, that that's what it's meant to be. Yeah. I love everything about them. I mean, obviously the taste, and I want to get into a little bit more about the infusions and some of the products you offer and all of that in a minute. But right now, can you tell me a little bit about like, Every choice, like I, like I said, I love the name, but even your packaging is so beautiful and minimal, and there's you use like this really beautiful tape to close <laughs> each of the infusions, and even the names of each infusion, like there's one called Energize, and one called, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about those in a moment, but, but first, why is like the aesthetic of all of it so important to you? Because clearly it is, because it's, it's beautiful, and why was that an important element when you started this business? I think it a brand is definitely visual and I wanted it to be attractive in a sense that somebody will want to try it just by looking at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also I liked the the simplicity of the packaging because you know everything is supposed to be natural and healthy and I didn't want to overwhelm the brand with something else I wanted it to be very simple yeah you definitely achieve that so okay let's actually fill people in on what the teas are and you said you got into tea in high school but was it this sort of tea at that point and how did you learn about the benefits of these sorts of teas and tell us a little bit more about like the actual products that you guys offer that you offer okay so in high school like I said it was just basically taste and I, I probably started with those flavored Lipton's or whatever which now I just I can't even believe why (laughs) but um you know it kind of started that I was looking for some essential oils that could help me with a few things and I'm like why don't I just make a, a drink out of it and take those same benefits from essential oils but turn them into a a flavorful tea and um and so that's That's where it started, I guess. And so most of my blends have their name is basically what they what they serve, what purpose they serve. Um, Like I have I just came out with a stay immune, which I don't think I had that out. So I don't think I sent you that one. Cool. But it's yeah, it's it's really good. Um, It it's it has properties to help build your immune system that way in winter you can you can try to build up your immune system yeah. for when for when the cold season hits but and then I also I did one called stay well which is a sore throat it has sore throat properties to help soothe and cool your throat if it's hurting which also helps with heartburn so that's nice because that's something I suffer from oh cool that's super cool and there's one that's called stay energized what's in that one I love that one that is one of our most popular ones. It's a mint chocolate. Um, and so this one, the only benefit I guess it serves is that it has yerba mate in it, which oh. is the healthiest form of caffeine. Yeah. So so that's where the name comes from. It's a good one. Um, what, what other ones? What are some of your other popular ones? Did we mention most of them? Oh, no. We have quite a few. How many do you have total? Um, I have 11 right oh, now. Oh, wow. Plus three holiday blends, which are still on my website, but will probably be taken down soon. Tell us, yeah, tell us some more, and I want to know your favorite. Well, I used to be a huge coffee drinker. I'm not anymore, um, but I did come up with one that was a coffee flavor because that's what oh, I love most cool. about drinking coffee. That one's called Stay Brewed, 
Um, and then I, I have that one. I loved it. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, that one is really good. Another one is called Stay Warm. It's our version of Chai. That and... was my favorite. I know I keep saying <laughs> that, but literally that one was my favorite because I'm always freezing. Yeah, it's it has a bunch of warming spices in it, so that's where the name comes from. I also have one called Stay Fit. It helps with your metabolism. It also has an, an herb that... Yeah, is for mom- or not momentum um, stamina it also has uh, rose hips which helps with I love your that joint one as well. health yeah so it helps your joints that way because I'm I like to lift weights and so does my husband so that helps you know pr- protect your joints from getting too much strain on them and then some of the more common type of benefits that you see with teas I have one for sleep called Stay Rested that helps you calm at the end of the night and be able to fall asleep. And then one called Stay Smooth, which is for digestion. So good. It's like every everything that you would need through a tea is accounted for in, these, yeah. in each of these 11. I love that. So how do you come up with the blends yourself? Is that something that you get to be creative with? And are, were you making these teas for yourself before you were making them for your company? I wasn't. I I always wanted to, but I didn't want to buy all these herbs when I could probably just go and buy something that was, you know, serve the Already same made. purpose. Yeah. But um, – that is my favorite part is the research and the taste testing. I I love looking up an herb and figuring out what its purposes are or if I want a certain purpose in my teas, I will I will search for that like what kind of herb helps with this. And so that was fun doing all the research and putting them together and and finding the balance that makes the flavor so good. So it is a fun that. part. Mm, it's so good. I'm so grateful that I found you and connected with you and that we're sharing Earth Roots with all of the listeners. So if people want to try your teas, what should they do? I have a variety pack, which is what I sent you, and it does include the two new ones, the Stay Well and Stay Immune. Um, It doesn't include the holiday ones, but they can always request those, and I wouldn't mind throwing those in as well. But the variety pack is definitely the best way to – to try them and find your favorite. Um, cool. But I mean, if you're looking for a certain benefit, then I would just I would just find that one and then see if you like it. Very cool. So where do they go if they want to check out your website and the teas? I'll have a link in the show notes, but just tell everyone where they can find it. I have a website called earthsroots.com. I also came out with an app. It's through my website builder, so you have to go through them to get my app. But I, I can definitely send out a, a link to that as well. So I hear, Stephanie, that for Wellness Wonderland listeners right now, there's a special deal. Can you tell them how they can get 10% off? Yeah, if you use coupon code WONDERLAND, you'll get 10% off. Amazing. That's fantastic. <laughs> I hope all of you try the teas. Stephanie, thank you so much for coming on the show and for being so awesome in following this dream that you had to create these tea blends and sharing them with me and now a bunch of other people. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, I love your purpose of your website and Wellness Wonderland is such a perfect explanation for what I am trying to approve, uh, what I'm trying to provide as well because I feel like taking care of yourself emotionally, physically, and spiritually, that's like the only way to live really and Mm. that's what my herbal infusions promote um just being able to help people with those goals so that we can all be our best selves Mm, I love that I was going to ask you what living in a wellness wonderland means to you and you just defined it so that's so perfect thank you so much for being here and I'll talk to you soon all right thank you All right, guys, I hope you liked those interviews as much as I did. And be sure to check out Earthroots using the code WONDERLAND to get 10% off your order. I actually have a cup of her tea on my desk with me right now warming me up, so I can't wait to hear what you guys think of the tea. 
And drum roll, next week on the podcast, Arden Rose, who is one of my favorite YouTubers. She has over a million subscribers on YouTube. She's fantastic. This conversation was one of my favorites that I've had in a long time. It's a long one, so brace yourselves. Maybe clear your calendar next week. I don't know. You guys are awesome. Thank you for listening. I adore you. I hope to meet a bunch of you in New York. But until then, have a great week and stay inspired. And I will talk to you next week.